Hello, everybody. How are you? It is so good to see you. I'm a little bit discombobbled today because my, um, well, I, sh I shouldn't say because, but my daughter came from um, the Eastern Shore, Maryland, down to spend the weekend with my daughter here. And they came over Friday, and we did pumpkins, and we had such a good time. And yesterday, I just kind of relaxed a little. And so anyway, I am here. I don't feel like I have a full show for you, but we're just going to talk and have a good time no matter what. All right, so I am working on block nine. We are now, as soon as I finish this block, we are three quarters of the way through to having a quilt for Christmas. So I'm very excited. And don't worry if you've fallen a little behind. I understand that feeling because when you fall a little bit behind, sometimes you give up. But try, hold on, I'm going to close the window. The sun's coming in on me. But I was going to tell you that don't give up. It's easy to want to. Because you, you get out of that rhythm. But if you can try to just take a few extra minutes. Just say, today I'm going to take a few extra minutes. Ten minutes a day, you'll catch back up. And it's so fun when you are on target and you're part of the flow. So anyway, it's just something to think about. But hello, let me see. Polly was the first person here. Followed shortly by Marsha and Linda. Hi, Linda Ramos. And Mary's here. Kathy Klein from Illinois. Hi, Kathy Klein. And uh, Polly said, what's the quilt behind you? This is my quilt of the week. This is a Christmas quilt that I made oh, a few years ago. And you normally don't get to see it. Because I, every year, I put this in my living room, and I love it so much that it tends to stay there. Hold on. <laughs> Let me try to arrange this. I know it normally stays there for quite a bit because um, I love it so much. I got the fabric from So Much Fun down in Gastonia, or near Gastonia, Virginia. Hello, Melissa! And I loved this because it is Christmas fabric. But to me, it was the first time I had seen an unusual combination of Christmas fabric. And so I got very, very excited and bought it. But who would have thought of turquoise? And it was an early form of grunge. And then the terracotta for Christmas. So I made this, and I actually got it quilted and bound. That is surprising for me, because it's totally finished. And I love, let me see if I can show you the quilting I really enjoyed. I did a feather circle with a grid pattern in the middle. So actually, I'm right proud of this. I think I did a pretty good job. Clamshell on the border and then the holly leaves and berries. So I love this quilt. It is, it will always be one of my favorites. And so I thought, hey, it's downstairs because right now upstairs I have a fall quilt in the living room. I don't remember the pattern. I apologize. You know, that's where... It really does, let me get the camera set, it really does matter if you keep a, um, hold on just a second, it really does matter if you keep a record of your quilts, because if I had, if I had a record, I could tell you, this is the pattern, and this is the fabric. And that would be nice because you, could, you can't really go find the fabric, but you could find the pattern and find similar. But I got this fabric, oh gosh, it was probably 2012. And from so much fun fabric when they were in their original location. And I dearly love it. So it's very, very special to me. 
And I thought, hey, I've got it off the wall. Show y'all. Because, you know, when you take something off the wall, then you got to put it back on the wall. And that's a lot of work. <laughs> so, let me tell you, I carved a pumpkin on Friday. What fun was that? I haven't carved a pumpkin in years. So, that was so much fun. Let me put my glasses on because I keep forgetting since I've had my cataract surgery, I now can't read without glasses. And that might sound odd, but it's a mechanics to do with the fact that when your cataract gets so bad, I don't know if it bounces the vision a certain way. And so for about six months, I thought I was getting younger because <laughs> I could read without glasses. And she said, you do know when you have your cataract surgery, you've got to go back to glasses. And I was like, okay. But seeing with color and seeing with clarity was well worth it. All right. Well, Melissa Lamb, how are you, sweetie? It's so good to... Yeah, just go do it before you know it. So in fact, Mary, I said Mary was the first person who got this week's block. And um, I'm just so proud of her because even if they're, if they're tough, she keeps right at it. And she's doing a beautiful job. So, um, but this week I added a little something. When we do our photos, I'll show you. Because I looked at the block and I thought, well, that's nice. But in my Christmas blocks, I'm doing the red, the greens, the blues, and the background. And this one would have made yet another block with just two of the color combinations. So I went into EQ8 and I jazzed it up just a bit. So thank you. You're healthy and happy. About oh, good. Oh, speaking of healthy. So my, I, um, my daughters, both my daughters, my grandson and my son-in-law came over Friday and they had gone to Aldi. I've got to try Aldi. They got big, beautiful pumpkins for $3.50. That's incredible. So they picked us all up a pumpkin. And I'm a nice big pumpkin. I would show you mine, but it's full of ants now. <laughs> so they were very fragrant pumpkins and very good quality pumpkins. And the ants are loving them. But I will show you a picture of it. So we were carving it, and then we treated them. We have the best Chinese restaurant not far from here called Mr. Lou's, L-U, Mr. Lou's. And, oh, my gosh, we treated them all to Mr. Lou's. And, you know, I thought about cooking. But, ladies, I don't know if this kind of... Um, you like the color maroon? I do, too. I do, too. But, you know, when you... Nowadays, now that I'm of an age, cooking is a lot of work. <laughs> it's different to cook for Mark and I and to cook for a whole parcel of people. And then you've got some people who don't eat this and some people who are allergic to that. So I thought, Mark, can we treat on Mr. Lou's? <laughs> And it worked out wonderfully. And everybody got to get something they normally don't get to get. And the food, Mr. Lou outdid himself. It was wonderful. So anyway, so that was my Friday. But in the middle of all this, when they said, can we come over Friday? I was like, sure, you know. I, and then I remembered, ooh, I've got my booster COVID shot to do. Just want to tell you. I got my booster shot, and I'm doing great. I got it Friday. I, I get it in my right arm because I'm a definite left-hander. Mark got his, too. And he wants, mainly we try to keep me safe, especially since I only have one kidney now, and I'm being real careful. But it's been, it's been a rough year health-wise, and, and I'm getting so much healthier. And I want to make sure I don't get COVID. And, uh, but it's doing great. I, I mean, I barely felt any soreness in my arm at all. Mark yesterday felt just a little off, tired, a little achy. So he took it easy, covered up and slept it off. And 
I am now so happy that I can be with my family who are all vaccinated and I don't have to wear a mask because I've been still masking, even with my family, worried that they put, my daughter's a teacher. She's out there with unvaccinated kids all the time. So I tell you, I'm going to be an ambassador for getting these vaccinations. They are truly, they're, they're life changers. They're life changers. And I've told you about having uh, a, a dear lady that I know of who caught polio as a child back before you could get a polio vaccination. We're so lucky that there are people, doctors, scientists, that there are companies who will invest the money and time. So I'm so, so, so happy. And um, so still, when people come to the house, I put a mask on. I, I have yet to, I don't go to the movies yet. I'm still being careful, but at least with my family, I've had my booster. I've done everything I can. So I'm happy, happy, happy. It was so easy. I mean, a momentary little, maybe a little, little pinch, and then off you go. So, and it was much easier than, less sore than e either of the other times. So, and now they say this, this puts me right back up at like 95% and I'm happy. All right. So, I'm still working on this block. And there was something I was thinking to tell you. And I've got some fun things to talk about today. And let me, I thought, oh. Mark turned the fan on over there, and I'm getting cold feet. And I don't know about y'all, but if my feet get, get cold, then my hips start to ache. You know, it's like it, the cold works its way up your bones. But Pat is here from South Carolina and Diane57 from Texas. Yes, once we can get enough people vaccinated, we can start life again. And we can stop all the... I want to go see a movie so bad. You don't know. My... The thing that I do for myself, you know, you have to ha you have to find that one thing you do to kind of build up your soul and your spirit and going to the movies was my thing. And because when I go into that theater, the lights go down and big screen, I am not Deb anymore. I'm whoever is in the movie. And I love that feeling. I dearly love that feeling. And I miss it. You know, at home, you try to watch a movie. Mark's got a good-sized TV, but the dogs bark. Or somebody needs to go out to go potty, or the birds make a noise, or Mark starts talking, or I start talking. It's not the same. So anyway, but thank you. And everyone, take good care of yourself and get those vaccinations if you can. Get it over and done with. I think most people are afraid of it. For no good, really good reason. And they spend too much time worrying about it. We're just getting it. You're done. I mean, it's easy. It's very easy. So a tetanus shot, that's harder. This, a breeze. A breeze. So anyway, and I just went to my Walgreens and got it. Easy peasy. No cost. In and out. Done. So let's see. Later on. We're going to be talking about, let me see if I can write it down, because you ladies might have seen this word out there, and like, what is that? And I didn't know what it was either, and I would see it in relationship to fabric and think, what is, what is that? I looked it up for you. Because I said, if I'm wondering what the heck that is, you might be wondering too. Have you seen this word lately when it comes to fabrics? Because I saw it on Missouri Star Quilting and said, what is iCat fabric? Well, it's not iCat at all. It's e-cot. So think of e and cotton. E-cot. This is ecot. It's an Indonesian word. 
And I'm going to tell you what it is because it's an ancient form of fabric making and dyeing. So I'll be telling you about that. All right. Now, then I'll show you what I did to finish my baby quilt because I ran out of the border stripe. I didn't quite have enough, so what did I do for that? And then this past week, we started back with our Art Quilt Thursdays, and I can't wait to show you the spooktacular quilt that I'm working on for that. And then let me bring this over. I hate to look away from you so much. We're doing our Christmas Block 9. And I was hoping to have some blocks bordered because I've got a wonderful sashing and border arrangement for our blocks. And then just little things. Now, since we're getting, whoops, we're really, 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 really close to Halloween. I am turning around my little, this I made for y'all a few weeks back in September. I did some little crafts, and I was making this, and I'll show you. And I just took a little, it's just a glass little candle holder, and I painted it orange and then put the acrylic like a Mod Podge on it, then glued some glass pebbles for the eyes. And right now, I turned the candles on. I don't know if you can tell, but I turned the candles on. Because I'm getting really close to Halloween. In fact, I decorated the house. And now I've got my pumpkin. And Mark, his work sent him a package. A Halloween package. From, I think it was Harry and David. Yeah, Harry and David. I mean, nice Halloween goodies. So, of course, what did I say? Can I have that box? <laughs> So, it is a really heavy duty. I just think it's so cute. And he said, well, what are you going to do with a Halloween box? And I said, I can always cover it with fabric. I'm going to enjoy it until after Halloween. And then I'll let you know what I'm going to turn it into. But I love these really nice um, boxes. And it had some... I forgot, uh, Excelsior in it. And that's just like little shredded paper. But will that make a good nest ornament for Christmas? So I love, I see stuff like this come in. I know what I can make with it. And I enjoy it. I'm like a little kid. But this is a wonderful box. And it because it has a clear see-through lid, you can easily see what's inside. So, we will work on that the early November, right after Halloween. And I'll show you what I do. Then, a couple little things. This, my mushrooms came in this. And, you know, I try to look at things differently. One thing is, I hate throwing things into the trash. And this is a sturdy mushroom container. And I thought... This is perfect for putting little sewing supplies in or bead supplies or anything. And I don't like recycling meat containers unless I can put them through the dishwasher. And often the plastics won't make it through the dishwasher. Now, this is a number one recycling. So if you recycle number one plastic in your area, you don't have to feel badly about putting it in the recycle bin. But I just thought I would tell you, kind of remember things like this because it's a way to keep it out of the landfill. And I'm always looking for containers. So instead of buying a new one from the dollar store, you can, you can just make your own from that. So let me see. Is anybody else... I, exactly. And you know what? I've always told y'all, I'm a kid. So I go, oh, look at the box. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to show you, I did some work on beads this week. I didn't do much because I had a lot going on. 
with the new the the, the start back up of our art quilt Thursdays. Gosh, I love our art quilt Thursdays. And you know, Sunday we talk about all kinds of quilting, but a lot of traditional quilting. But when Thursdays come around, it's like whatever we want to do, we let our creativity just run wild. So now let me see if I can turn you down so you can see these. Turn down the camera. And I tried to wear a blouse that had nice fall colors because, boy, we've had to turn the heat on now. It's getting chilly, chilly, chilly. So I was showing you before. This bead is, that's part of the alimony bead I was telling you about, which I'm going to make the prettiest alimony necklace to celebrate that and say yep 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 account and payment and of course i i blocked out any numbers so that nobody could see and you don't have to worry there's no way to peel this apart and find any important information trust me but see how i took i remember i sanded the ends actually some of these i i did the trimming with the small scissors, like I showed you, you just kind of rest this, rest this on the edge and just clip, clip, clip as you turn around and it'll level it. Then I took and used markers and ma did some marking on the ends. See that? I think, you know, without it having the white paper end, I don't think you would know that that is fabric. And um, with out well white paper in but without see with these made dark i think you forget that this is just the inside of an envelope oh it's 80 where you are oh wow think out of the box oh marcia that was really good that was really good so here are the two I had a blue fabric and a Christmas fabric. These are the fabric beads I made. And I'm going to put little gold pony beads in between these when I make a necklace. And I haven't decided for sure what I might do a gold one here or maybe even a silver. But I just wanted to show you. And I don't know if you can hear that. But they are nice firm beads. And these are the beads that I put the fabric on paper, then rolled them, and I think they're beautiful. And when you put that, I put four coats of finish because with the fabric having a nap on it, I wanted to cover up that nap, and so it took four coats to get a real shiny, nice look. But these... I don't know if you remember when I was making these. These are just the inside of business envelopes. So next time you get mail or bills or anything like that, look inside and see what kind of... Yes, I got I got my... I ended up getting my booster on Friday. I was going to get it Saturday, but when we looked it up, we said, oh, we're eligible a day early. So I got it on Friday and I'm feeling great. But these are all different kinds of security envelopes. And they print this on the inside of an envelope so people can't peek through the envelope and see your business. But I think they're going to make an amazing. But see how shiny they are? So I think that I'm going to make a necklace out of these with either silver or black pony beads in the middle. So I just thought I would show you how pretty they look when they've got the finish on them. In fact, let me bring a lamp over. I want to let me push this away and try this. And let's see. Whoops. Oh, I forgot to plug this back in. But I wanted you to see how pretty these are once they have the finish on them. Whoa, okay. Let me see. see look at that. They're nice and shiny and pretty. All right. And you heard that. So they, they, they become a nice substantial bead. All right. Let me put these away. And then... 
And thank you, thank you to people who have been sending me show and tell pictures. I can't wait until I can show you some of these things. There was one I got that today that I just kind of, you know, did this intake of breath because it was so amazing. And I can't wait to show it to you. All right. Come on, Deb. This is getting boring now. It's like herding cats. Let's get these beads put away. If I leave them here, they'll be in the way of me making the block. So, okay. All right. So now I've got a retreat in November. And now I can go to my retreat without worrying. Because I know that I am as safe as it comes. And that even if I do get a breakthrough, it's not going to be very bad. So poor Colin Powell. He was fully vaccinated, but he had blood cancer, which means he had no, immuni no immunity in his body. And so, you know, they were afraid of, of him catching it, and he did. He couldn't fight it. So, but he did try. He tried. He, he got immunized. But what a dear man, and we're sorry for his family. So, all right. Now. I was hoping to get in a little fabric order. I love pineapple fabrics. Almost every day they have an amazing sale. And a couple weeks ago, they had a couple fabrics that I could really use for my art quilting. So I just got a couple yards. Alberta's here! I just got a couple of yards, but it hasn't come in yet. I mean, this postage, sending anything is so slow. So I'm going to talk to my kids. I'm thinking we'll find something, a different idea for when it comes to Christmas, because this is ridiculous. Either you can't find it, or it takes forever to ship it, or it costs a fortune to ship it. So we will see. I want to remind you that our deadline is coming up for the pin cushion contest. And I'm really hoping that you can make a pin cushion that shows a bit of who you are and share it with us. And I will let you be the judges on November. I think it's the third or fourth. I'll let you be the judges and whoever wins gets a $10 gift certificate to the fabric store of online shop of their choice. Okay? So I'm excited. And Pat sold her house. How exciting is that? I wanted to see her beachfront um, condo. It's, it's, it's not letting me sign in to see it. But, oh, my gosh, I wanted to show Mark. Because that's our dream one day. Is if we could get a condo or something on the beach, we would be so happy. So I'm, I'm kind of watching what Pat does so I can copy it when the time comes. Because, you know, we're getting to that stage. The time's going to be here before we know it. So leaves are finally turning outside. I had to bring my house plants in. Oh, that's what I should have taken. A, next, I'll take a picture to show you next week. Because to bring these, I have two giant house plants. And I said, if I bring them in, Mark said, yeah, you've got to put away your hammock if you're going to bring those in. There's no room in the sunroom. I found room. <laughs> I was not ready to give up my hammock yet. So I said, if I can't go to the movies, at least I can get in my hammock. It's second best, and it's a pretty good second best. So... Anything going on with y'all? Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Kathy Klein got her booster. She is going to go to a retreat. You're right. It's been two years, and I'm so excited. I'm so happy that the people running this retreat said, you have to have proof of your vaccination. And yay. And we're going to, but we still have to wear masks. If we're sitting at our table, we can take our mask off. If we get up for anything, put your mask on. I'm willing to do that, whatever it takes, so that I can get back out and with other people and, and share our love of sewing and 
And I love doing the, we do a quilto bingo where we bring six fat quarters and we tab this basket. We throw our fat quarters in the basket, you know, one of the six. We play a round of bingo with quilt related themes under the bingo headings. And then whoever wins that game wins all the fat quarters. And we go, we go through six games. And I love doing that. Jody's here. It's a dreary rainy day. Well, we need rain, Miss Jody. So would you tell it to keep moving eastward? I would appreciate that. Or a little southeast. You're probably a little northwest of me. So anyway, but I can't wait to go to a retreat. It has been entirely too long. You know, and this past is like, man, we've made it through so much. I'm ready to go have some fun. All right. So here is this week's block. And it the pattern did not call for this wedge right here. It only called for these two in the background. And it's a pretty pattern, but it didn't allow me to use it enough colors of fabric. Oh, wow. Are you in Arizona? Oh, my goodness gracious, hon. So I'm going to turn this around now so we can look at our... And Miss Jody, I told them to expect to see an amazing quilt coming up soon with the pictures. But here are our quilt blocks so far. And so then I came to this week's and any of uh, the, the half of the quilt bo blocks that I chose from the wonderful Wombat Quilts, Kathy down in um, the wonderful country of Australia, she designed them. And this one was wonderful, but it only had room for two colors. And I really wanted it to be a three colors because we've had, well, no, I think all of them we've been able to get three colors in. So I just said, hmm, I'm not really happy with just using two colors. So let me, hold on, I'll show you. Because this would make a lot of sense if you, would, if you got a chance to see it before you watched me put it together. So, okay. So here, let me bring it up. Here was the original block. And I said, oh, that's a pretty block. And I like it. It's kind of an inverted, you know, like double star. I thought, that's really pretty. But then I realized it would just be able to use two different colors. Because I haven't gotten bold enough to try more than two. So that would be the gray version. So then... This is what I designed. I added, I added, let me hold on just a second. This, okay. I added the, the light and dark blue rose because the name of the quilt that we're making is the Sunball Snowball Star. Well, that's the working name. I don't know what the final name will be. But so here's the background. I'm hoping you can make out that that's the background. And I wanted three different color sections. So I just I just added this to give it, and, and, and Mark liked it because it gives it the snowball look. So what you'll get is a grayed version so that you can color yourself. And then let me see if I can show you the actual blocks but when i get these i that this one was supposed to be for six inch blocks and i wanted it 12 inches because i want to make this christmas quilt pretty darn easy but look at this mary it's just four pieces on each wedge this one's going to be pretty darn quick to make so you will get this you know to make four copies of this and and then I'll give you a picture of the grade version 
And uh, so I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to show you finishing up one more of my blocks. But I did all of these wedges because I find it's just easier to do all one colorway. And you see where I did a dark red, a lighter green, and a dark blue, and then the background. So now I'm working, and this was... These were the A wedges. Now I'm going to work on the B wedges. And then I'm going to show you. I'm not going to do all the B wedges. You would get way too bored. But I've started a B wedge. And let me show you this one again. I had been not really showing you much in the way of making these. Because you guys were doing so great. But let me come back to you all. Okay. Oh, it does, doesn't it? So what I do here is I've got this is B1. Right here, B, B1. And I decided the numbering. They had you starting on the edge, but I thought I kind of like to... Oh, they had you starting on the edge, but I kind of like tucking it in. It just makes it easier. Then I cut this piece so that it's at least a quarter of an inch bigger. And you can hold it up to the light. In fact, let me do this and see if this will. When you put a light behind it, in fact, turn it this way. There you go. So if you hold it up to a light or to a window, do you see how you can tell if it the fabric extends past the lines far enough? Yeah. My grandson gave me, or my daughter gave me that lamp yesterday, and so that's coming in handy. All right, so then I've taken my glue stick, and I've glued on the, the first fabric. You glue on the first one. I used to pin them on, but if you are not careful, and you pin near where you're going to sew, you could break a needle or damage your machine. So now this is B1 in place. I've got B2 is this next piece, which will be the background. So let's, it kind of, sometimes it's helpful to watch somebody do this because it helps you realize little, a few little tricks. Like I place this even with that fabric. Then I've already pre-folded all of these wedges. But I'm going to still fold this back and check to make sure I've got enough space. Now, if I do it this way, I probably can use this for another one. But I hate to get myself into a corner where I might waste some fabric. So now I'm going to try it this way. But there's something for you to realize. You can't just line this fabric up perfectly. Because when this folds over, look what it does. It runs right off the fabric. So that's why I always say lay your fabric on, fold. Because see, I'm putting it right sides together, right side down. Then when I fold this back, ha-ha, it will work there. So now let me turn this over. And I'm going to stitch right on this line. And I start early and I end late. And I have my machine on a 1.8 stitch. 1.8. Okay. Here we go. So now that I'm sewn, I turn it over and I finger press this fabric out. Then I can turn it back over this way, and I can cut the excess off. And I like the way I turned the fabric around, because see now I left more fabric in a contiguous, you know, one straight piece, where when you, if you cut a fabric where you've got a weird thing on the end, you know, it limits the use you have for that scrap. Now I'm going to go iron this. Okay. Whoops. 
Come on, Iron. Wake up. My auto off doesn't always come back on like it should. You know, when you do your iron, they'll go to sleep. But as soon as you pick up the iron, they're supposed to wake back up. Well, mine doesn't always wake back up. All right. So now I've got this pressed. It covers everything. Whoops. Covers everything. And since this is a long piece on a funny crooked edge, I take and put a little bit of glue. So when I go to sew this block and this block together... It'll help make sure that that doesn't flip back when I get ready to sew it. Because, boy, that'll ruin all your fun. So, some of these little pieces, just to keep them from flipping around. All right. So, here I am. Now, I should use a ruler. I want to show you good safety techniques. And I've been lucky. I've never cut myself with the rotary cutter. But you know what? got to be careful just when you think you're, oh, I'm immune to getting cut, it'll grab you. So be careful. All right. So now I've, I've trimmed this, and I've got the first two pieces. Now what I do is I'm going to be doing putting the fabric on for B3. Well, if I look at B3, then I know I need a dark green here. So I find my dark green. And I know by doing the last one that when I fold this part down, it's going to go a little forward. So I make sure I have fabric over here to cover that. So let me... Okay, I'll come in here. Sew it with my tiny stitch. Because when it comes time to tear the paper off, you do not tear the paper off of these blocks until all of the blocks have been sewn together. Okay? Never take paper off because you don't know, since you put the fabric on whichever way it'll fit, you never know where the bias is. And now I take and fold it on the next line, so now I know I can trim this. And this is where the add a quarter, see how this has a lip? The add a quarter ruler comes in real handy. Actually, this is even bigger than the add a quarter, but I like it because it's long. But I come in here, you put it so it hooks onto this paper, and that way you've got a quarter of an inch. And here, I'm just going to quickly run along the outer line. Now, I've got three colors. So, Mary, are you excited about this one, hon? Because I think this was going to be much, much easier. Okay, I'm trimming off a little of that excess. Now it's time I've to do my shiny red. So I'm going to come on here, place, whoops, too many things. Okay, place this here. And you just line it up because you know that's a quarter of an inch. You line it up. Then you fold this back. Yep, it will it will work perfectly. So now I just take this. Now you can pin if you want to, but I've done this enough that you know I'm pretty comfortable with just flipping it over and sewing. But I still peek underneath just to make sure it's lined up. And then you sew up this next one. Okay. Now I'll flip this over, let me press it, and then we'll trim, and guess what? This one's done. This is totally done. So I think you'll be happy with how fast you can move through. If you're a member of our group's I.O., this pattern and your gray grade picture is already on the site. I put those on there this morning. As soon as I sent Mary's pattern to her, I wanted to make sure I sent hers off first because she was the first person to ask me today, and I thought, yay. So now I'm going to come back to this, 
and I'm going to put a little bit of glue right there because this, see how it wants to flip up so easily? So you put your glue, and if you want to make sure it's really glued down, then just take it back to your ironing board. All right, so now this is piece B. This is piece A. So I put them together. I try to make everything so that there are these little square blocks. So now I'm going to take them and put them together. And I've shown you this before, where you put the needle right on that intersection. I mean, the pin. You put the pin right on that intersection. And then you come up here right on the intersection. And then you put and try to match it up good. And if this is straight up and down, then you know you've got a good placement right here. So you pin this. Then, okay. So now put this needle right in the intersection. Come through right in the intersection. See how it gets easier. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And so then now I'm going to put a pin here. And then I'll do one more just to make sure. Because, you know, it can, even though it's paperback, it can still wiggle waggle just a little bit. So let me get, you want to make sure that the pen is perpendicular. If the pen is laying at an angle, that means you're not lined up properly. So you want it perpendicular, standing up straight like that. Now that I've got it pinned, I take it over. And I'm sew it, start early, sew it at 1.8 stitch length, sew right on through, and off. Okay, let's see how I did. But if you, I'll tell it to go to your, oh, please, we, we haven't had rain now for a few weeks and uh, so we could use it. We're not in bad, horrible shape, but you know, we're not as bad as parts of California. But what I do now is these, there are so many layers that come together and I hate when I try to quilt this thing and go over bumps and lumps. So I'm, I am pressing all of these open. Now, if it were just two pieces of fabric, I would want to press it to the side because quilt blocks that are pressed to the side are stronger than ones that are pressed open like this. See that? Oh, good. Okay, and I'm going to get ready and show you. Soon as I finish this, I'm going to show you what we're doing on Thursday nights. So now I went over and I ironed first the open seam part. Then I turn it over and I iron this. But look at those seam matches. You can't get much better than that, can you? Now, I've got one more block already made. So I can at least put half of this block together. We're really lucky on this joining because we don't have to match up seams. So we can just trust. We can just come here, match up the edges of the paper. And so, this is, this is exciting. I don't have to do any weird super-duper pinning. So now I'm going to sew this together. But this is the easiest block to date. I mean, just nice, straight, four pieces done. Okay, and right off. All right. Okay. Now. I'll come here first and finger press it open. This is much easier than trying to iron it open. If you finger press it, then you can just go touch it up on the iron. It holds its shape really well. And, you know, when I get ready to sew the other half on here, I'll probably trim these back. To reduce the bulk. But are you ready for the reveal? At least you'll get to see half of the block. You ready? Here it is. 
And I love using the dark and light of each one. It gives it does look like a jewel, doesn't it? Good job, like a like an um like a diamond cut, brilliant cut diamond. But I thought that gave it a little bit more of a snowball look. And I think you'll like it. I hope you don't mind that I altered the pattern. But I think it added a little extra oomph. If you don't want to put these two pieces in, don't worry. But I thought without those, that would be a lot of background showing. So let me pin it up over here so it can join our others. And with the finish of this block, we are three quarters of the way done. So that is exciting. All right, let me get, look, this one's trying to run away. Let me put this down and pin this one on now. All right, whoops, let me get another pin really quickly. Because this wants to fold up on me. So today, it won't take me long to finish the other half of that block. But we only have three blocks left. I'm so excited. And this one's going to be a piece of cake. And so just really quickly, don't forget that I've also designed. Let me real quickly write this. Hold on just a second. Come on. I like my new mouse, but it goes to sleep very quickly. Kind of like my old dog. And uh, it's like, wake up. Let's. We got work to do. All right. So if you send me, if you're not a member of our group, our time. Whoops, let me try to get. Okay. Our time to quilt. And that's at twc.com. All right. Our time to quilt at. Oh, thank you, Marsha. Our time to quilt at twc.com. And you notice how Marsha typed in all. Oh, is Debbie here? Yay, Debbie's here. It, it, if you notice how Marsha typed in all caps, that's because I ask anyone that wants to write a comment they want me to notice. If you write it in all caps, I, it's so much easier for me to grasp. I wish I could comment on everything you post. But then I'd be looking at the computer the whole time. So it's kind of hard. But when I see capitals, I know you're trying to get my attention. If you have any questions, I love, you know, I love being there. So anyway, but you're noticing now I do love jewel tones. You're absolutely right. But then I designed a sashing and border. And I think I can... Let me find a better way to show it to you. The last time I tried to show it to you, I was having a terrible time trying to figure out how to do that. Oh, look at what I did. I was smarter than the average bear. This is a flannel covered poster board, you know, the foam core poster board. And I did, look how I marked it. I didn't realize I had done that, but that, that way you can really straighten up your blocks. So let me put this one to show you. It's so, so, so easy. And I apologize if you've already watched me show you this, but it sometimes, if I show you numerous times, it makes it so easy for you to go, I can do that. And that's what I want, is I want you to have fun. So, this is going to be the sashing. <laughs> Let me try to. I'm, I get all backwards when I do the camera. I do everything backwards. But this is the sashing and the cornerstones for this Christmas quilt. And it is so, so easy to make. Let me see if I can. Boy, this flannel board's nicer than I thought. So, let me see if I can Stand it up here and turn the camera a little, and that way you can see it. And it's very, very simple. You cut up a bunch of, and I think this is inch and a half. You cut up a bunch of inch and a half blocks of whatever your star 
fabric is going to be. Then you cut up a few two and a half inch blocks of the star fabric. And then you have these strips that are the sashing. And they're the same width as the blocks are. 12 and a half inches, 12 inches finished. And then you sew the two, the two of the little blocks on the end. And that way, when you have sewn them on and you fold them back and press them, got it right here. When you sew them on the end and fold it back and press them, you have like a, a flying geese, okay? Then you add one of the squares. Then you add another strip that has like the little flying geese. And do you see how easily that star is built? I can't wait to do the sashing. This goes together so fast. And don't forget, I do not, I do not, um, I got a bunch of these. I cut everything out first because it makes it easier for me. And, but I do not draw on the diagonal for those little squares. I'll show you what I do. And then for the outer little rim, for the outer border, it's going to have a little narrow border with narrow flying geese that'll make the other side of the star. So, but I will, next week, I will have this for you to see. You don't have to make this. You can make any kind of border you want. But I thought, what can I find that would be really fascinating? And I think it's going to finish it off really cutely. But you just cut up, cut that up, and you're, and you're there. Somebody messaged me. Let me make sure. Okay. Now. I always worry it might be Susan trying to tell me something. So these are going to be, so you'll put your block here, you know, your blocks will go here, and then it makes up a two-piece border, same fabric, but it'll make the border look thicker. So I think that's going to be really awesome. And somewhere, let me see if I can find the photo of how that's going to come out. But if you do not belong to our group, just email me. Shoot me an email at ourtimetoquilt at twc.com, and I will send you all the patterns. I will send you um, all the gray, the gray, the gray um, photo of the block so you can color them in and I will send you the instructions for how to do the sashing and the border. But I think it's going to be so cool. So I'm going to start putting it together by next week so that you can kind of see. And some of you, if you finish your block for that week and you say, I wish I could do more, you'll be able to start doing your border and sashing. So, okay. Yes, you did, Debbie, but it's okay. I'm going to show you what we did this week. We're kind of starting in on an easy starter project, and I gave you ideas of what do I do for our first real project. We're going to keep it a little. We're going to do a slow start because the holidays are coming up, and I don't want to overwhelm you. All right, let me check really quickly just to show you, because I'm pretty sure I have a, a picture of what the, um, let me see. Um, hold on, star sashing and border. I've got really easy to read directions. And let me see, I thought I had a photo of it. Huh. Well, I don't see a picture of it, but I know for sure I made one. Border layout. Here we go. All right, you ready? Here is the border layout. And I think that will just make it so cute with all of those star and snowball blocks and then to finish it off with the star border. All right. So you will see more of that. But like I said, 
You don't have to belong to our groups IO to get the pattern for free, get the border and sashing for free, and I'll be very happy to send that to you. Because I love sharing this stuff. You know, it's like the more the merrier. All right. Oh, today, no, we, when I put a starting time, it's always Eastern Standard Time because that's where I live. So think New York time. And we start on Sundays at 3.05. For you, Marcia, if you're in Central Time, it would be 2.05. On Thursday night, we start at 7.30 Eastern time. So just take New York time. So just take and I, I do the show a little later here because I know some of you, it's like, mm, no, that's, you know, it, 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 you're not even home from work in time. But anyway, but don't worry if you miss a show because it's still up there. All you have to do is go to the Hour Time to Quilt. And you'll see it listed and you can rewatch it. But now let's take a look at what we did do this past week. I will show you. Let me get my, here's my basket. Okay. I will put this down here. All right. I love having these inexpensive baskets from Dollar Store so that when I'm working on a project, everything just gets dumped into it. And uh, Polly, does this fabric look familiar? I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not. But when I get ready to do a project, I go to the closet and I just start pulling anything that I think might work. Yes, I'm in the Eastern time zone here. You're in Central, Marsha? Yep, so you say, oh, 205. And, but when I tell people, I always say 305 because we go on New York time. But sorry about this. I, I choose. This is why it's so hard to keep my room clean. Because when I get ready to work on a project, I go over to my fabric closet and I just start pulling stuff out left, right, and center. Now, it might not look like much yet, but I promise you it's coming along. Goodness gracious, I, I chose a lot of fabric. But I'll show you what I've got started so far. And ah, I love ombre fabrics. If you're going to do any kind of art quilting, um, really get... I If I had to tell somebody what kind of fabrics are best for art quilting, I would say batiks and ombres. And then, any, then, you know, whatever your stash in it. And with this, I'm using Steema Seam 2. I like it because I can move things around. Because it has paper on both sides. It's different than some fusibles. It has paper on both sides. So you can peel off one edge of the paper. When it's hard to get the paper off, just go like that. Give it a little tear. Or you can take a pen, score the paper. Makes it easy to tear it off. Because sometimes that's the hardest thing. But anyway, when you tear off the paper, and here is the fusible over here, it still has another paper on the other side. So I iron this onto the fabric. Then I can peel this paper off and stick it. Oh, I don't like it there. Lift it up and move it. Until you iron it, it's not permanently down. So this is Steema Seam 2. I keep these sheets because it's really convenient. And um, if you go on Amazon and you look and look and look and look, you can find the best deal. All right. Last time I bought it, there were two packs, two or three packs together. Very good price. All right. So now... Here is the drawing I made for what we're going to do first is just last Thursday and this coming up Thursday is to do, I'm so excited about Halloween, and I said, let's do a quick little Halloween scene. And I typed into my Google search engine, Halloween images, and boy, did I get a lot of responses and I'll show you some of those but we're so lucky to have the internet now because 
it really, 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 it makes it so easy to do research for things. And you just type in what you want to see. And in this case, I put images, which means drawings and photos, all images. All right. I'm going to have to lay, leave this down right now because it's not fully glued. But I, I've got the beginnings of my scene. You see it? How, how do you remember that fabric? Oh, I remembered you liked it and you used some of it. I love my fabric, so I'm, I'm very fond. It's very attached. Okay, so this is part of an ombre, and I love that it's like gray down. They, you can just see the kind of layer of gray on it, okay? And then I used this wonderful fabric for my moon. And what I did then is I found this fun fabric. And what I did is to make it look like the craters, I did a little pumpkin face on it. And, and then here is a little lighter area of it. Then what I did with this is on... On the steam machine paper, I drew my part, this part of the scene on the steam machine paper, then peeled it off, put it on black, ironed it down, and then cut it out. And so I'm not finished yet. I've got like fencing and stuff, but I'm going to do that with thread painting. But you see my tombstones and the grass. And then here's the stem of the pumpkin. The pumpkins are going to go here. And the pumpkins, I'm going to use some of this purpley orange to do the top of the pumpkins. And then black put somehow. I've got to figure out exactly how. If I just use black on this, then my pumpkin's not going to show enough. And then... And the reason this is not glued down and looks messy is because... I glued down my moon first. It's down. So now I had to then try to cut out the background to go behind the moon. Then here I'm going to have black gnarly trees. So the edges are going to be black also. So I had picked out this wonderful background. Jenny Byer background. Not much is going to show, sadly. <laughs> oh, gosh. So anyway, but this is... And I love using the Golden Threads paper because can you see how, you know, I use, it's my pattern. See how this stops here in the moon? And this is my pattern, and it helps me to do cut the shapes. And now what? let's go to our photos, and I'll show you the images that I chose from to make this. And this is easy cut Fuse. It's like cutting and gluing construction paper. And this is just a little warm-up exercise that you, before we do a our real, real, real um, next art project. And I will tell you briefly about that here just in case you weren't here. All right. Because what I want to work on, our first real art quilt project, is going to be... Um, backgrounds, backgrounds for art quilts, and I want you to figure some things out that you would like to do, because backgrounds are really fascinating, so, all right, let's go to our photos, let me see, all right, I love show and tell so much, and wait till you see some of today's photos, Okay, Alberta sent us this. This is her crumb quilt. Beautiful, beautiful job. She's playing with how she's going to set up the final. Um, and in fact, this brings it up. Well, let me show you her other photo, and then I'm going to show you for people working on crumb quilts. This is her Alex Anderson quilt. It was the beginning of COVID, and she finished it, and it's in her kitchen. Isn't that wonderful? Way to go, Miss Alberta. It's beautiful. 
So now, while we're thinking of that, let me go to the cover. I mean, the crumb quilts. I think I've got to go to my name first. Yeah, here are the crumb quilts. So I want to just show you, anybody who is making a crumb quilt, there are so many different ways to turn the blocks. The only difference in these patterns is which way you turned your little block. So I was hoping that if I showed you enough ideas that you would be tempted to use up some of your stash pile and make your own crumb quilt. Isn't that neat? So it's a simple little block and feel free to share it. And I, I whipped it up myself. It's not a big deal or a big secret, and, but I love sharing stuff. But look at all these different ideas and combinations. So, and if, and if you're making it and you would like me to send you these photos so it gives you ideas, I'll be happy to. Don't forget, our time to quilt at twc.com, and I'll shoot them out to you. All right, so that, I'm hoping maybe that might have helped Alberta a, a touch. Now, Barbara sent me, and last week I didn't have these loaded, and I was so sad about it. Look at this beautiful geisha Asian quilt that she made for her granddaughter. That is lovely. Just lovely. And I love how she used different stripes and borders to create all of that interest in the quilt. Way to go. And then this, I do believe she made for her son. And that is just beautiful. And I'm wondering, is this a printed border? I mean, I'm, it, it, I, that's so intricate. I would love to know how she made that. It's beautiful. It's a way to go. Way to go, Miss Barbara. Then Betty's been busy. Oh, my goodness, has Betty been busy. Look at this wonderful quilted butterfly. Isn't that great? And I love the background that she's got it to of the wavy, curvy pieces. We're going to... We are going to look into how do you make a background like that. So we will be doing that as part of our first real series, too. And look at her cute little, um, oh, now I've garden gnome towels. Is that so cute? And here's another one. So darn cute. A way to go with that work. Then someone gave her a bunch of wedding fabric and different associate, associated little trims. So she made a bride. That is so cute. I love that. I mean, that's a lot of work. It's beautiful. Beautiful. And then look at her binding tool star quilt. Oh, I just, I was wowed by that. And I love that she used turquoise instead of just a straight blue because that really makes it pop. I love that binding tool star uh, pattern. I, I will probably make another one in my lifetime. I've made three already, but they, uh, that is a fabulous pattern. And I hope those of you who made it found that once you get the hang of it, it's pretty, pretty easy. And Beverly is making a wonderful quilt of valor quilt for her husband. Look at these wonderful blocks. Just beautiful. I think it's a quilt of valor fundraiser blocks. They're wonderful. Miss Bonnie made the cutest Nora the bear. And this was a quilt she tested as part of her quilt testing that she loves doing. So cute. Way to go, Miss Bonnie. Okay, now, up oh, here we go. Here is, whoops, I can't show you this little folder because this is where I'm keeping her pincushion entry. So let's start here. This is 
her block of Christmas, block of the week. And her fabric choices are exquisite. Boy, she said, it's just from my stash. Boy, I'd love to sneak in and peek at her stash and rifle through it. And I, I wouldn't take any unauthorized. <laughs> this is a scroll she's working on. Is this awesome? She's got silk, ribbon embroidery. Look at all the embellishments, hand embroidery. I mean, this is I love that, Carol. Keep sharing that with us. We love that stuff. And this is one of my favorites of her Christmas block of the week. Just amazing. She comes by her Carol magical name quite honestly. And then this is some, oh gosh, you know what? She has told me several times, but it's the big stitch quilting is just the, the movement of using up scraps and slowing down a little bit to enjoy the process. And I love that block. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And here is a doll she made. Is that the cutest thing? All of the hand, beautiful hand embroidery. Oh, I just love it. Beautiful work. I know she treasures that. Okay, so thank you, Miss Carol. All right, now for me, okay, I have a few things to show you. When we come, I'm going to put this, whoops, let me back it up. I'm going to put this on slideshow so that you can see the Halloween pictures that I found that might give you some inspiration for doing your own Halloween little small piece of art. I love that purple. That's really pretty. I'm not doing any lettering. That's too much work. But I'm going to do a lot of the scenes I'm seeing in here. A little bit from this one, a little bit from that one. I just saw these and I, oh, look at that blue. I saw these and thought, oh my gosh, this would be so much fun. Take away the words and what fun could you have? This one is really scary. <laughs> a tree coming to life is the Grim Reaper. Mm. I love that skull moon. That gave me the idea to put eyes and a mouth on the moon. And the bats. Oh, I'm going to put bats on mine. I'm going to have a vulture silhouette. Look at this purple. Is that the cutest thing? So these I just found by typing in Halloween images. And I love them. I, it, the internet really helps keep me um, excited about creating art. But I think there are enough scenes out for everyone. Okay, I think we're back to the beginning. All right, and you'll find when I'm done, you'll find, ah, I did, I used a little from here and a little from there. All right, so now I'm going to go over to today. All right, now I'm going to, oh, don't let me forget to talk about e, e cat e cot fabric. Here is a sample of e -cot. And it's a special dyeing and weaving technique that creates a little bit of a fuzzy edged design. All right. And then one more time to see Mark and I went to the waterfalls, Moravian waterfalls. Had a great time. Then here are the pumpkins. My daughter, my oldest daughter did this one. And these pumpkins were only $3.50 a piece. My oldest daughter did this one. My grandson did this one. My daughter, Katie, my she's my middle child. She did this one, and uh, she told me who this was, and I always forget. You probably know better than me. And then I did this one. So we had such fun doing those. 
and here they are in the dark. I love it. I love it. I love how Evans, I, t I was teaching him how to carve back the pumpkin so that more light comes through. That's awesome. M Mike Myers, something, I don't know, I, I forget what this is. But I, I just, we had the best, best time making these. Thank you, Katie. That was so much fun. I found this. This is what Pat, she sends us some cute, cute things. And I thought, is this the truth? So this is my new motto. I'm not going to waste time aging gracefully at all. <laughs> this is one more shot, one more picture to show my son and his youngest son, Donnie. Isn't that cute? He's such a good dad. I cannot, whoops, I cannot tell you what a good father he is. Whoops, no, let me see. Boy, okay. Here's another example of ECOT fabric. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Because I had no idea. I kept say, seeing this I-K-A-T everywhere. And I was like, what is that? ECOT. And it's a dye technique. So you'll be seeing a lot of it now. Here are my grandsons. They got the books that Nana sent them, a book about Halloween. Pat, pat, pout, pout fish at Halloween. This is my Russell and this is Donnie. And they are well-loved babies. They live in a generational home um, with my son's wife's family. And it's so wonderful. Those boys... Get so much love. This is my daughter's porch decoration, which I think is gorgeous. That is so beautiful. Here is my daughter and her husband. This is the one that came down from the Eastern Shore, Maryland. And that's David and Katie. I love that photo. And then my son sent this to me, and it cracked me up, so I wanted to share it with y'all. Isn't that cute? And I love that my son sees something like that and says, oh, mom and her ladies would like to see this. <laughs> and this is my last one. It's just my favorite Snoopy and Fall. You know, it's been a long time since I went out and caught leaves as they fell. I think I need to do that this year. All right. Now, let's see who else's we have. And was there anything else I was going to show you? I don't think so. Oh, Miss Dolores. Okay. So, we'll go through her parade of Christmas blocks. Beautiful, beautiful. And I love how this one, it looks like it's a mint and it kind of goes back. It looks dimensional. That is so cool. That is a great optical illusion. Here are her wonderful Christmas blocks. Aren't they wonderful? This is, she had to take it off her design board, but this is one of her landscapes she's working on. Really beautiful. She does mountains better than anybody I've ever seen. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Way to go, Miss Dolores. Here's another Christmas block. So I can't wait to see new ones from her. That was wonderful. She's, yeah, she's pretty caught up. Okay, Miss Jody. Now, are you ready? Is your seatbelt on? Okay, first I'll start gently with you and show you some of her Christmas blocks. She might not be caught up, but that's because she's doing something fascinating. Let me see. I might have to let me do something. Okay, see this photograph? This is Papa and the granddaughter. Okay, now look at this good because I'm going to get ready and show you something. Look at this. 
Look at what Miss Jody's been doing. When I opened this email, I gasped. I was amazed. So I wrote her back and said, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I said, I'll talk more about it during the Sunday show. Is this phenomenal? In my dreams, I could do something like this. I mean, amazing. So way to go. That is so cute. That's going to be a family treasure. Oh, Miss Jody, you are something else, girlfriend. You are something else. Okay, Miss Kim Hicks, I hope that she'll look at this one and see the options for her crumb blocks. I love how she used a charcoal neutral. That's awesome. So way to go. Way to go, Miss Kim. All right. And Miss Linda, I've, I've, I've been keeping this as a place marker for her. But she came back to Thursday nights, and I was so happy to see her. All right. Now, Lisa, I had to coax her. She was shy about showing too much artwork. And it's like, oh, don't be shy. We love this. I just want you to look at how many of the translucent shapes, like the leaves and the dragonflies. And I love how she takes a little bit of this and a little bit of that and turns it into art. That's fascinating. She and Miss Linda have that talent in common. Look at these, these ribbons. They look like silk ribbons down here. And just, isn't that amazing? It just makes me wonder, how does her mind, her mind just is open to all possibilities. That's beautiful. Just beautiful. And how she makes the backgrounds. Ah, oh, looks like different threads. Maybe she saves her thread bits and adds. It's wonderful, sweetie. Look at this with the flowers. And a little shimmer, these butterflies. I love this. It looks like a frame. That is fascinating. So, Miss Lisa, thank you for sharing with us. Here is a more traditional, they used to call them like a penny rug or something. And I think she made this for her son. But I love the cardinal and the chickadee and the Christmas scene and her. I, I am not one that look judges the value of something by well how well made it is i judge the value by how much heart and love it has in it but i do have to tell you her blanket stitches are perfection oh my gosh i couldn't do them that even for anything so i was very impressed miss lisa and then these are her art bowls isn't that fascinating so anytime, if you think, well, I don't know what to make, and you think, well, I don't know if I have anything, please remember this. And any of these things you have put together with love and joy can turn, it, can turn little bits and scraps into beautiful art. Okay, here's Miss Mary who's here and her cutest little kitty. Look at that kitty cat. Oh, that's a sweet kitty enjoying that sunshine. And here are her blocks. And I'm not sure how much paper piecing she did before, but she has stuck in there through it all. I'm so proud of her. Love, love, love it. Way to go, Miss Mary. She came up and then look at that. Is that fussy cutting just amazing? Way to go. So she sent me her picture number eight and then said, is nine ready? <laughs> I love that. That miss made me smile. All right. Now who are we ready for? Miss Marsha. She has done a beautiful crochet of Christmas colors. I love that. And I'm hoping that we're going to see some 
bead making from her because I think she'd be an excellent bead maker. Miss Melanie, look at her wonderful crumb quilt. And I love, I love when you take a pattern of mine and you run with it your own way too. And look, instead of putting the white, look what she did. That is so dramatic. Way to go. I love her pumpkin quilt. And she said, she's sorry if you're getting tired of her teddy bears, but she finished it. So I want to show you. She used some of her amazing hexes, which are on my band list for in my house. But she makes them look fun and easy and gorgeous. And, oh, she went to a garden show. That's a 1,900-pound pumpkin. Amazing. And this was a, a work of art from all metal scraps off of wine bottles. You can turn anything into art. So here is her finish. Look at the back. Look how she sprinkled those wonderful hexes on there. And her last pumpkin. So thank you, Melanie, for sharing all that with us, hon. We love your work. Please never feel like you're overwhelming us because we love every bit. When you share with us, it gives us inspiration and ideas for something we could make. I love Miss Polly's kitty quilt. Love, love, love it. Okay, let's see who's next. I love that I have this many um, folders for people because uh, your work inspires us. Oops, I must, I had something for Miss Fry, but now I don't know for Miss Pat. I don't know what it was. Sorry, Miss Pat. And then our last one is our dear Susan. It was so much fun seeing her um, last week. This is her cute little. Um, oh, now I forgot what the name of it was, but she did the quilt testing, too. It was just adorable. And here are some blocks she's been working on. Beautiful. I love how she pins them. She's so neat and organized, and she pins them so she can keep track of them. Oh, one day when I grow up, I'd like to be more like Miss Susan. And here is a scrapbook she's doing and some fabrics. Look at this wonderful pen cushion. And here is, I think it was like Flora the Bear. And she put a little button snowflake on there. Because hers is Flora meets a snowflake. So cute. And a little table runner. Really, really, really nice. Oh, and this was a happy planner. Okay. That's neat. All right. I think that's it for the photo. So let's talk a little bit about this ECOT. Let's talk a little bit about what is that, okay? And I think I've got a website up that I can show it to you. Let's see real quick if I can pull down to this. If I looked it up on Wikipedia, and here is an ECOT weaving right here. Look at that. Isn't that that's detail of a classic. I cannot pronounce the word, but it's a double ECOT from the early 19th century. That means the early 1800s. Amazing. So, and we'll, I wanted to show you a few pictures. A child wearing an ECOT robe. And a young woman from Sumba wearing an ECOT garment. And with the warp for cotton tie ready for dyeing, here's a tricolor warp ecot weave from Mexico. So here's silk tapestry. 
So this is that classic. From what I've been seeing, they're reproducing this look now in home furnishings and quilt fabrics. So, okay. So I showed you a couple of examples because I thought, what does this mean? And, you know, I'm so used to there being so many abbreviations on, on, on computer talking um, in the online chatting that I thought, what is that? And, um, but the best thing I found, don't forget, even though it's I-K-A-T, that is pronounced ikat. And it's an Indonesian word. It's an ancient, ancient, one, probably the oldest form of fabric decoration and dyeing. And it's a method for coloring fabric in pattern by resist dyeing. Now, you think, well, what's so different about that? Well, it's applied, it is applied to the individual warp and weft of the fabric. So instead of just being printed on top of something, that's not how it's done. And it's not woven into the fabric structurally. Instead, parts of the yarn for the warp and or the weft are protected with a resist before dyeing. So think about this. You have, you've got your yarn and they wrap it with something or coat it with something that resists the dye and then dye the rest of it. To me, it would be overwhelming because then you have the yarn that's dyed with resist. Then you put it on, you know, you, or, or you put it on a weft. You make your, your, I mean, your warp, which is the up and down, the long way of the weaving. And then the weft goes back and forth and back and forth with the yarns to make the weaving. So when you realize that you, you dye it and then you weave another whole thing with its resist dyeing, it boggles my mind to think of how they get the pattern to match up. And it's probably why it's got a slightly diffused fuzzy edge because how in the world but by the 19th century, the Cambodian, the ikat that was made in Cambodia, was considered among the finest textiles of the entire world. The king of Thailand came to the U.S. in 1856, and he brought some of it as a gift for Frank, President Franklin um, Pierce. And, oh, my gosh, they, they're made for skirts worn by the women um, over in Asia, or as wall hangings, or special ceremonies, and it's really amazing. So I encourage all of you to take some time to look this up, because you're going to see that word quite often, and I think that you would like to know, what is ECOT? And, um, so, and then I just wanted to show you block number nine. Here is that pattern, and you can get it if you're on our site, if you're a member of Our Time to Quilt, Groups I.O. It's already on the site waiting for you. And if you're not on our site and you want it, email me at Our Time to Quilt at twc.com. All right. So if you send it to me, I'll send you all of the patterns and the sashing border information, directions. And uh, I love sharing. In the meantime, your assignment this week is to look up ECOT because it, they're thinking it's the oldest form of fabric decoration. And, you know, as quilters, I think that's part of the beautiful history. It might not be quilting as such, but it's an early form of decorating ourselves and our environments out of the joy of living. It's a good thing. 
We wouldn't have the quilts if it hadn't have been for that. Because not all quilts were made to keep you warm. Some were made to create beauty. Like broidery purse, where they would take little cuts of certain patterns from expensive chintz. And then they would applique it down onto a less expensive muslin. And then they had a beautiful curtain or bedspread. So, but, you know, and, and now when I say muslin, let me, re, let me explain that. In the 1800s, muslin was a very much finer weave, a very lovely fabric. We think of muslin as kind of something to make little sacks or to, to experiment on or to cut as a trial run of an outfit before you cut the expensive fabric. Muslin was quite, quite nice in the day. It meant a different type of fabric. All right. I would like to see. Oh, good, Marsha. Does anyone have any question? Oh, go pick up your groceries, sweetie. Nice seeing you, Miss Mary. I loved spending this Sunday, October 24th. Time is flying. But I, I enjoyed spending this time with you. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me and this joy of life and fabric and quilts and crafts and all of it. Because, you know, that's what... We work hard for. We work hard to enjoy ourselves, to create something lasting, a legacy that we can leave behind for those we love. So I hope you spend some time this week doing something just for you. I've had my booster. Yay. So poor Mark. He's had his pneumonia shot. He's had a um, shingle shot. And now his booster, all in a month. <laughs> so he, he looks like a pincushion. <laughs> Don't forget, get your pincushions finished. Get a picture of me by Friday, November 1st. Okay? All right, everyone. Take good care. Have a wonderful week. And stay warm. Because fall is here. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great week. Do something special for yourself. You can't take care of others if you don't take care of yourself. Do something wonderful just for you. Thank you, everybody. You're the best. Bye-bye, everybody.